The time has finally come when the Doctor officially comes back to television. David Tennant has strapped on his Chuck Taylors one more time as he becomes the Doctor again to delight the countless Whovians across the galaxy, myself included. Now, I was a bit late to the party as far as Doctor Who goes. I first got into the show back in 2010 or so and stumbled onto the series when it was still available on Netflix. I began with the 2005 reboot starring Christopher Eccleston and I was immediately hooked. I binged the entire series up until what was current at the time, which was the Matt Smith era. And then I kept up with it until about halfway through the 12th Doctor's run when it felt to me that the stories were beginning to get fairly stale and progressively more convoluted. I did give the 13th Doctor a fair shake, but despite liking Jodie Whittaker's performance as the Doctor quite a bit, she was done a large injustice with the story she was given and I wound up skipping the vast majority of her run. Once it was announced that it was time for the Doctor to regenerate though, I gave that episode a watch and I was floored to see Whittaker regenerate into David Tennant, especially with it having already been revealed that Shuri Gatwa would be playing the Doctor next. We got a host of announcements after that reveal. Catherine Tate would be coming back as Donna Noble, and Russell T. Davies was announced to be the showrunner once more. I heard all of that news, and I was forced to ask myself, what year is it? Time is a bit wibbly-wobbly, after all. We got word that instead of a one-off special for the 60th anniversary of the series, we would be getting a three-part special that closes some of the loose threads from the Tenth Doctor's run, as well as focus on the mystery of why the Doctor regenerated the face of his tenth iteration in the first place. Despite my excitement, there was this lingering pessimism in the back of my head. When a show begins to fail, it seems like the go-to response is to backpedal and go with the safest guaranteed options. For Doctor Who, the safest option would naturally be to go back to the way things were at the height of the modern run of the show, which was the David Tennant and Matt Smith eras. So, now that the long-awaited premiere has aired and we have our first taste of what the 14th Doctor has to offer, was it worth it? For me, that answer is an unequivocal yes. For the moment we see David Tennant again, it took me right back to when I was watching Doctor Who for the first time over a decade ago. For the first time in several years, I was actually excited to be watching a new episode of Doctor Who. They begin the episode with a brief recap of the history between the Doctor and Donna for those who haven't watched that portion of the series. And then we pretty much get right into it after that with the Star Beast. The first of three specials, the Star Beast reintroduces us to the Noble family several years after the Doctor last saw them at Donna's wedding, where he gave her a winning lottery ticket as his own way to kind of apologize for having the wiper memories of him and return her to a normal life on Earth. She and her husband are happy and even have a daughter coincidentally named Rose. We learn that Donna gave away all the money that she had won after buying a home for the family, though now they're struggling financially with Donna having lost her job. Despite being generally happy, she still constantly has this nagging feeling that something is missing in her life. As with so many Davies-era episodes of Doctor Who, we have a spaceship crash in London being the main plot of the episode with the Doctor investigating, which ultimately leads him to interacting directly with the whole noble family with the exception of Wilf, who the Doctor wrongfully assumes at one point is dead. Donna's daughter Rose stumbles across the alien from the ship in an alleyway hiding in the garbage and brings it back to her work shed. She learns that the creature is called the Meep and that it's running from these other alien bug things that want to kill it like they did with the rest of its species. I don't want to underplay how ridiculously cute this thing is. It's got the big Disney eyes and soft fur. There's no way this thing could be evil, right? Right? We get a lot of reveals over the course of this episode. We learn that Rose is transgender and that she's made fun of for that in school by her peers. Now, knowing fandoms and politics, I assume this is going to wind up being a point of contention for some fans, especially when Rose points out to the Doctor at one point that he is assuming the Meep's gender by using male default pronouns, but I don't really mind it. I mean, trans people do exist, and it's not some woke agenda thing to accept that and just let people be who they are. They even explain the whys a bit later in the episode when it's revealed that the Metacrisis event that Donna experienced wound up being shared with her daughter, and that the memories and time lordiness aspects of the Dr. Donna were passed down to Rose, allowing her to subconsciously also have those memories deep down, which is why a lot of her Etsy creation things look an awful lot like the various aliens that the Doctor and Donna encountered during their time in the TARDIS together. 
It's also revealed that, shocker, the Meep is actually the bad guy. Now, who could have ever guessed that Furby could be evil? Around the climax of the episode, we have this moment that strongly reminded me of the experience that the Tenth Doctor had where he had to save Wilf. The Doctor and Donna are split by a pane of glass, and the Doctor reveals that together they can save London from being destroyed by the Meep's ship. But in order to do that, it's going to cost Donna her life, which she doesn't even hesitate to accept. She, she wants it done. The Doctor then uses a series of code words to activate the Winter Soldier, I, I, I mean the Doctor Donna, and together they save the city. We're led to believe that Donna is dead at first, but then we learn about the meta crisis being passed on to Rose, and they kind of save the day together. And then we just kind of get this moment where they just give up the meta crisis power because apparently that's just something that you can do. I I don't know. That part of the episode really felt to me like they just didn't know how to write themselves out of the whole Doctor Donna thing being permanent. I mean, it's fine, but I do wish that we'd gotten a better conclusion to that. Another thing I'm not sure how I feel about at the moment is the new sonic screwdriver. It's always had this history of practically being like a magic wand, but at this point we have the Doctor being able to make touchscreen displays and full-on force fields out of thin air with this thing, which to me feels a bit much for something that used to basically just be used to open doors, scan things, and, you know, disrupt electronics. I don't hate the idea of the Sonic being able to do those things, and it does make sense for the Doctor to have more in his arsenal when the enemies are always trying to kill him, but I do worry that the writers will inevitably wind up using the Sonic as this magic fix-all for any sort of problems that they write themselves into. Overall, though, I'm quite happy to say that this first special does not disappoint, and even though the run with David Tennant is going to be short-lived, I'm excited for what the next two episodes will bring. Hopefully if this does well, it won't have to be completely the end of the 14th Doctor. I mean, the audio adventures are great options for more content, sure, but I'd personally like to see some sort of television anthology series where we have some sort of multi-era event happening. Maybe different incarnations of the Doctor can get their own episodes, leading into a combined finale where all the previous incarnations stop a major villain or something. But what do you think? Are you happy to see David Tennant back? Are you sad about how few episodes we're going to actually have with him? Or are you just happy that we're getting any at all? Let's have a conversation down in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the content that you saw today. Because we're growing this channel from scratch. It's you and me. So let's do it together, alright? Until the next time, though, I'll see you later.